Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler. What an honor, privilege, and joy it is for me to be here with you today. Whether you're joining on live stream or on the rebroadcast, welcome. I pray that you would set aside the next few moments, open up your heart, be expectant to receive something from God, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the challenge, no matter what you're facing, no matter what the difficulty, no matter what you've been through, or no matter where you are. Today is a new day. David said this is the day that the Lord has made, not our, not our troubles, not our pressures, not our stresses, and certainly not the day the devil has made. No, it's a creative day that the Lord has made to show you, lead you, guide you, guard you, protect you, and to minister to you. God wants to speak to you. Ah, if we would ever embrace that, that God is constantly desirous, ready to speak. The only thing that puts his voice on pause is you and I. Through doubt, through fear, through unbelief, through not giving him time, space, a moment to speak. And today I pray that the pause button is not pressed, but you are ready to receive something from God. Well, yesterday we began a series, and I'm not sure how long we're going to go, but we began a series on the key of being thankful. And we want to move into part two today and look at the importance of being thankful. And it's not just being thankful to God, it's living a lifestyle of being thankful, of being grateful, of being thankful, and the importance, not only in the importance though, but the power that it releases. Listen, whether you realize it or not, when we live a thankful life, it releases the power of God and the authority of God in our life. And we want to jump right into this today and look at the ministry of Jesus because he is our example. He was and he is the living, breathing example of how we should live our life. We should emulate him, copy him, follow him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I don't follow Christ, don't follow me. But if I'm following Christ, follow my example and emulate that, allow that to be a part of your life. And let me just say not only a part, but let it be your life. And we're going to go to John chapter 11, verse 41 through verse 44 as our text for today to see how Jesus was thankful and in the moment that he was thankful. And I think context is so important. I've said it before and it bears repeating, especially concerning this teaching, how do we study the Bible? We should study the Bible one word at a time and slowly. So often we run so fast through the scriptures. I read five chapters today. Well, that's great, but what did you receive? Well, I don't even remember what I read, but I know I read five chapters. That's not good. It would be better for us to read one verse a day. Think on that verse. Meditate on that verse. Allow that verse to digest within our spiritual digestion. And know, remember, but most importantly, receive what it's saying to us than to run through five chapters and not even remember or, more importantly, receive anything from it. So let's look at thankfulness and the importance of being thankful in the ministry of Jesus. Very familiar passage of uh, of Scripture, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Wow, how many messages have been, been preached on this text? I mean, the power, you know, Jesus wept. We've heard messages preached on that. That's all in the context of this story. The miraculous power of God in operation on the earth, 
when Lazarus is brought back from the dead. We've heard messages on that. Do you think it looks impossible? God can give you a turnaround. We, and those are all important, great, wonderful messages. But I think that in the text, there's something that has not been ministered on nearly enough. Let's run there and look at it today. Then they took away the stone from the place from the dead, from where the dead man was laying, they're referring to Lazarus. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, now pay very close attention, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. We could stop right there, but we won't. Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I say this. Say what? What he just said. I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Some have said, and I preached this before, Thank God he just said Lazarus, because he if he didn't, everybody would have come forth. But he specifically said, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot, with the grave clothes, and his, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them that were there, loose him and let him go. Now let's run back to where Jesus began speaking. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. What is he saying? Father, I thank you that you always have heard me. Up until this point, this moment, this, this, this point in time, you have heard me. You have been consistent. There's never been a moment, a day, an hour, a situation, a circumstance that you haven't heard me. I thank you that you have heard me and that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I have said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. It's important to remember that when God does something, that's why this text here, is a beautiful illustration of why I have always said that God, when he wants to do a work in you, he not only wants to do it in you, but he wants to do it through you. That when God blesses you, it is not for you alone, but it is also through the overflow of that blessing, because God the, remember Ephesians 3.20 says this, now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that you ask or think according to the power that it, that is at work within you. God not only wants to do a work in you, he not only wants to bless you, he not only wants you to experience a blessing, but he wants you to understand that while you are a recipient you are also a conduit. While you are one who receives, you are also one who gives. Now, let me tell you, you cannot get this out of order. You, there are some people, they're awesome givers. They're awesome blessers, but they're terrible recipients. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't take that. I couldn't receive that. You, in order to be an effective giver, you're going to have to be an, an, effect, an effective recipient, a receiver. Now, some people don't struggle with that. I, I don't. If somebody wants to bless me, I'll receive it because I understand that, that that blessing may not be for me. It may be for someone else. But let's get back. <laughs> Maybe that was for somebody today. But I want to encourage you, not only be a giver, but be a receiver. Not only, not only be a good receiver, but be a good giver. You got to have balance. Come on. Come on. God has created us, orchestrated us, designed us to walk in balance. Our eyes work in balance with one another. Our hands, our arms, our legs, our feet. 
Can you imagine if, if when your left leg wanted to go forward, your right leg said, no, let me go backward. You, <laughs> you just start spinning around and wouldn't go anywhere. Either. So you got to have a balance. Amen. So don't just be a good giver, be a good receiver. Ah, maybe that was just for somebody today that just needed to have clarity on that. But he says, Father, I thank you that you always have heard me, and I thank you that you hear me now. And I say this, not for my benefit, but I say this for the benefit of those that are hearing me now, and I believe for us as well. When we begin to stop and look at this scripture, Jesus, at the very beginning, says, Father, I thank you. Now, we focus on the tremendous miracle. We focus on the event, the, the uh, culmination of the moment. But my friend, when we back up a little bit, the first thing that Jesus did was offer thanks. And we're going to get into this more this week, but offering thanksgiving, rather than rushing into your prayer closet and saying, gimme, 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 God, before you do that, and before you, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, be anxious for nothing, for no thing, that means anything, but in all things with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. All of that takes place prior to the next thought. Let your request be made known to God. Before we ever ask God for something, we ought to offer thanks. We ought to be able to say, prior to letting God know something that he already knows. He's God. He not only knows what you need now, he knows what you're going to need 10 years down the road, five years down the road, five minutes down the road. To offer thanks. The first thing that Jesus did is, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I thank you that you do hear me. And we know that he said this for the benefit not of himself, but he said it for the benefit of those who were there. A teaching moment for those that were there. Because after that miracle took place, they were going to be celebrating. It was going to be kind of hard to teach them something. So he thought he'd get a little teaching in prior to the miraculous. But more than that, there is an illustrated sermon here for you and I to pay attention to, and that is that he offered thanks. Could it be that in our lives, we are very tempted to fall into the rut, to the mindset, to the uh, repetitiveness of just asking God for something, and then at the end, we thank it. No, God is trying to teach us that it's important before we even ask that we're thankful. Lord, I thank you that you have heard me. I thank you that you do hear me. I thank you, Lord, that you know what I have need of before I ever ask. And that I want to be thankful. I, not only thankful, but th this Thanksgiving that we're talking about is an expression of worship. Do you ever stop and think that offering God thanks and entering into a thanksgiving, I will enter into his courts with thanksgiving. I will walk out onto his courts with praise. David understood this. Oh, before I present my need, I'm going to thank him. Thank you that you are God and that there is none beside you. Thank you that you know what I have need of before my lips begin to move. Thank you that from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is not only worthy to be praised, but you are a faithful and a living God. I am going to thank you even before I see the answer made manifest 
in my life or my request made manifest in my life. Let me ask you a question. Every one of us have something that we're believing God for in the sense of we've believed, we've received, and we're just walking out through faith and patience the word of the Lord until the promise is manifested in a tangible way. Do you find yourself just asking for the same thing over and over? Or once you have believed and received, have you began to just thank him that it's done? And I believe that in every one of our lives, there has to be a point, yes, of prayer and supplication, letting our requests be made known to God. But once we have asked God, have you transitioned to the next place that you just begin to thank God that it's done? Thank you that it's mine. Thank you that it's done. Thank you that I'm healed, I'm well, I'm whole, I'm delivered. Thank you that I'm prospered. Thank you. But wait a minute. You haven't received anything yet. You're still going to the doctor. You're still doing the treatments. You mean that I should thank God that it is finished and it is done before I ever experience it? Yes. There should be a moment in all of our lives that we go from the place of asking and we transition to the place of thanksgiving. Father, thank you that it's done. You've heard me. You're not a man that you should lie. It is finished. Yes, there should be a time that you transition from constantly asking God the same thing, that you have believed it, received it by faith, and now you're going to call it done, and you're going to thank him that it's only a matter of time, not until you receive it, because you receive it by faith, but then that it is made manifest to where it is possessed in your literal hand in this physical dimension. We didn't even scratch the surface of what we're going to talk about, but I just feel it in my heart to pray with some of you and to agree with you to do just what I just said, to receive by faith, to call it done, and then to enter in a time into a time of thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, that it's done. Thank you that it's mine because I've received it by faith, not because I see it, not because I have it now in this dimension, but I have received it in the spiritual dimension. I have received it into my spirit, and now I believe and I call that mountain to be, I have called that mountain to be removed and cast into the sea. I've not doubted in my heart. I believed in my heart, and now I thank you that it is mine. Even if the literal mountain is still there, you have already accepted the fact that the battle has the tide of the battle has turned and you are declaring victory before anyone else declares victory some of you understand what i'm talking about you have received your healing and you have began to declare i am the healed i am the blessed i am the whole i am the restored i am the blessed i am the prospered my son my daughter our home you Maybe it's a husband and a wife. You've already moved aside that husband's clo uh, your clothing uh, in that closet where you and your husband's clothing used to hang. You've moved it aside. I'm talking to somebody right now. You've slid it aside and made room so that when he literally walks to the door and knocks on that door, you are ready and won't miss a step. Do you think like I'm talking today? Do you believe God to the extent that you're going to put action to what you've already believed and received? You're not swayed that it has not happened yet in this dimension because you've already received it by faith and you've called it done. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one that's struggling, discouraged, overwhelmed right now that the winds of refreshing would come their way that you would lift them up, encourage them, and that you would open up their heart and allow the faith that you put within every man and every woman, every boy and every girl, every child before it's ever born, you have knit it together while they were in their mother's womb, 
and you've given every man and every person a, warm, a measure of faith. I thank you that it's coming alive and that what is being said today is ringing true to them. Above and beyond anything else, I pray that they would be thankful and offer thanksgiving that it is done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, we barely got into this today, but we're going to continue tomorrow. And we're going to begin to just continue to talk about the key to being thankful and how powerful it is and how frequently we'll see it in Scripture. It's all throughout Scripture. But again, it's something that if you're not careful and mindful, you'll skip and rush right through it. And I believe that that is not going to be the case as we move further into this teaching. Hey, I pray today's program has been a blessing to you. If it has, I want to encourage you. Share it with your friends and your family on your social media platforms. Also, if you haven't, please go to our YouTube channel. And while you're there at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube, subscribe. You're going to find all of the messages that we've ministered. I believe they will be a blessing to you. Last but certainly not least, at the end of the program, please go into the description section. There you're going to find several safe, simple, and secure ways in which you can sow and give back into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. I want to thank you so very, very much for doing that. Well, my time is up, but I want to tell you that I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, until tomorrow, right back here at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, always remember, He is faithful. God bless you.